having had 10, 12 years of really not working, at least that's like in the bank. You know, we don't have anything else in the bank, but I had that experience of doing what I wanted for, I don't know, not, not everything I wanted. I couldn't go to Paris for lunch, but getting away from work for me really felt good. Welcome to Charborough Chats. You know, there have been a couple of times in my life where instead of going away on a vacation, I have just done nothing and just stayed home. I loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, and right. like once when Luis went away somewhere with, I think, my sister, and then once when I was didn't have a child, it was like the best. I And when people say, I don't know what I'd do if I retired, I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. There's right. so much. I, oh, my God. It's like your life would open right. up, I feel like. I know. I know. I haven't been bored for 10 seconds. The days fly past. It's amazing. Mm. That's awesome. Well, see, then you've had like 10 years of happiness, right? And I'm not unhappy. Exactly. I'm not unhappy, but I could be happier if I weren't working. Right, right. <laughs> right. Well, like Bailey said, I, you know, I like the people when I was working. I, I liked yes. some of the work. Uh, you know, being confined like that to the, the routine is hard. Yeah. And the thing is, it's weird because you think like at a university, they'd be a little more, I don't know what the word is. I mean, they are liberal politically, right? But you'd think they'd be a little more open in terms of HR stuff, but they're not hmm. at all. I mean, we were lucky. Some, everyone had the chance to get two remote days, like finally, right? Across the university. They were... If your supervisor or manager or whomever, dean of your school, agreed, there are there are many departments that, that they were told, no, you can't do it, that at all. Right. And, and our dean said, you can only do one day. Like, we, we had the permission to do half your time, but she would only give people one day. Pre-COVID, during COVID, after It COVID? all happened during COVID because it okay. became very obvious that many right. people could do their jobs at home, From home. as we did, you right. know? And there, are, of course, there are some people that that can't, you know, but um, like the people, well, you know, I'm not going to go into that. But, it, you know, it's just interesting, like maybe if things were more flexible, people would feel. I, I mean, I had to send out an email. We do this step challenge every year. And so I pulled last year's participant list to send them an, an email about this year's. And I got so many returns saying I no longer work at UB. I no longer. I mean, I mean, mm. a whole bunch so obviously people have left and retired. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. so it really kind of confirms that whole what are they what are they calling it these days? You know, the that everyone's leaving their jobs. Yeah, the great, great resignation or something. Yes. You know? That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The nomad land thing is appealing. <laughs> so so what happens in that? I still haven't watched that. I've been meaning to. What does she do? She just lives in a, a mobile home or what? No, okay. she just has a little RV, you know, a little camper van and goes out. And if you look on YouTube for van life. Oh, my gosh. Million, there's yeah. a million of those. Hmm. Some people sell their houses and buy mm -hmm. the RV. And there are people who live in Priuses. Seriously. By choice? Be <laughs> because as a choice, you know, not just because they're you know, homeless or whatever. But um, there was one guy who's lived seven years in a Prius. And the reason for that is a Prius can stay on all the time. You, oh. you use the electricity in it to heat or cool the inside. And when it runs, it turns itself on, turns the motor on, charges the battery, it turns itself off. And, and they literally, people don't turn them off for years at a time. Does he keep it? Does he have to keep it plugged in? Charged? Yeah. No. No, because the in a Prius, the it's a hybrid. The motor, oh. the gasoline engine, charges the battery. Hmm. Uh, Does he have to put gas in it though? Yeah, but it but like a day's worth of gas if you're parked somewhere and it's just recharging itself is, you know, forty five cents or something. Right. And, I'm gonna go buy a Prius. Of course, most people are in more a van yeah. or something like that. But well, like tiny homes. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Tiny it's homes like a, are similar. Yeah. All right. I think I could live in a tiny home if I were by myself. Right. You know, I don't think I don't know how couples do it because I know that I've seen people talk about their life in tiny homes or vans or whatever. I, yeah. I, I need some space. Right. I mean, so. yeah. <laughs> like you again. <laughs> yeah. And again, probably and again. I'm not married. Yeah. We, we thought about a tiny house, but but the thing is, they're not cheap. No. No. no? 
the cost per square foot is more than a regular house, you know. I mean, it is so interesting to see how they build them. It's so ingenious. It's like the, you ever see the, the little houses mm. like in the cities that are these tiny little rows mm. in between buildings and- Somebody that wouldn't sell. Right, and they're just this long, narrow- <laughs> Yeah. It's right, like a right. hallway almost. Yeah. Right, right. I have dreams about moving all the time because this is the longest I've been in one place now in 10 years, you know? And I obviously have a fondness for just moving. So I had another moving dream last night and I moved into this house with four of my friends, one of my friends and her three sisters. <laughs> this house was so weird because there was this one little refrigerator and you opened it up and there was the bathroom. It was in the refrigerator. <laughs> so I guess that's a kind of a tiny home concept. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Grace, you, I don't think you have a fondness for moving. You just have a fondness for change. I guess. Yeah. Mm. But the thing is, moving to a new place is one of the things I do like most. Yeah, I like to change most. It's invigorating. It is. Yeah, yeah it really it's is. Like it's like taking a vacation. You know, you yeah. come back and you feel incredibly inspired to... Right. Or just traveling to a foreign country, it, it's always like get your adrenaline going. And uh -huh. to, yeah. You have to figure stuff out. And same when you move and you have to figure everything out again. Yes. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's a, a huge part of it, figuring everything out. Mm -hmm. Right, You right. know, learning mm -hmm. again, because again, learning is like my, when I've taken those dumb assessments, learning is number one for me, that I always have to be learning mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. um, learning I mean, and problem solving. Yeah, I guess so, even then when there's no problems. Create problems. Well, that's what, you know, that's what Luis tells, again, my son yeah. has me pegged, you know, like, Grace, you don't, uh, mom, you don't have to figure this out, you know. Was I going to say, though, something about... Just start talking. Oh, that's See, that's one of the... <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's one of the issues about retirement for me, though. Like, when I worked on it with my financial guy, I mean, I put a lot of money into traveling because I really want to do that. So, of course, that moves me up further in actually mm -hmm. retiring. If I said to him, just get me out of there now, I probably could get out now, but I don't know if I could do the things that I really want to do. Well, you could do the backpack hostel thing. I don't like that. I like nice... No, I like nice hotels. <laughs> Go to Korea. Yeah. Hostile or hostile? I've heard good and bad. I've heard all I've kinds heard of all them. bad. I've heard, you know, you, you wake up and your wallet's gone. Yeah. People that meet fantastic people. And... Right. One of the things we were going to talk about was watching questionable content. Oh, with yeah. A young person. Or, the opposite gender. Or an older person sometimes. We were watching, have you ever seen Ali Wong? The comedian? I saw that yeah. movie that she made. Watch her stand up. There, there's two or three on Netflix. It's really, it's so filthy. <laughs> really? But she's brilliant. I mean, she everything she says, you can tell it's it's been written and rewritten. Yeah, I've heard that. And she's very precise. There's no like improvisation and everything. Mm -hmm. But her, her comedy, I think, is is wonderful. Oh, I'll and have to watch it. You probably don't want to watch it with Luis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we have a, you know, I just had an example of that. Um, we, we have a running, and I just forgot about it. We have a running joke in our family. Like if you're watching something with my dad and a sex scene comes up, like my sister Mary's there a lot with them because, you know, she lives close by and she spends a lot of time with them. And her, the running joke is, nice movie, Mare. Nice movie, Mare. He's like, I don't want to watch this with my daughter. <laughs> so I think there is a thing with like watching it with the child of the opposite gender. It's uncomfortable. Well, and also I think for like for the, for our parents who are in their nineties, I mean, the movies now are just, I mean, everything's out there. There's no mystery about anything. Yeah. And that's really, because my, my, my mother just cringes when she watches stuff now. So yeah. yeah, they were watching House of Gucci. I guess there's some real graphic sex scene in there. I haven't seen it yet. I want to, though. But Somebody on a podcast said they, growing up, his grandfather kept a clock on top of the television. And whenever something questionable came up, he'd get up and wind the clock and block the TV. <laughs> Said, "Well, time to wind the clock <laughs> until it was over, and then he'd sit oh my God. <laughs> Well, think of how different the experience was watching TV back then. Mm -hmm. You know, like you had to fiddle with the dial, get the antennas, with the antenna. yeah. Oh my God, the snow. Some movie I think had like snow in it, you know, as part of it. And I was like, Luis, this is what would happen. <laughs> right. Maybe when the weather was bad or something, you'd see all these little snowflakes all well, over your. Teeth. Where would you? How do you draw the line with Luis? 
usually the line comes up because we're watching something. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> you yeah, <know? laughs> you can't you can't predict it. So right. yeah, well, and it's funny though because there are a couple of movies that you know he's one of those people to watch things over and over. And there are a couple of movies where when the scene is coming up, he'll like leave the room like to get a glass of water or something because I know he's uncomfortable yeah. too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. To wind the clock. <laughs> wind the clock. <laughs> What about you, Bailey? You... Jack, Jack doesn't. Uh, he's not a real movie watcher. He's he's uh, he's funny. How old is he? He's seventeen, but he's never been a real big movie guy. Does he watch TV at all? Uh, he'll watch with us. Like we'll watch we'll we'll watch Yellowstone together or something, or we'll watch a we'll watch a series together. But he'd prefer to kind of sit on YouTube and do that. Oh, I know most uh, yeah. most people I know in that age group. Yeah, 20s just don't watch tv just yeah. uh, so what were you saying i'm sorry i can't remember now yeah, i'll just start talking just use, <laughs> use the grace thing that's my mo oh you know what he does is he'll just when something kind of uncomfortable comes up on the screen he he will he'll just kind of roll his eyes and he'll look away but he doesn't necessarily leave the room or mm-hmm. and then i throw he, a sweater over his head so he does he get, he gets embarrassed more than you do yeah yeah uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Luis gets more embarrassed than you do, or I don't know. You know, I haven't asked him his embarrassment level, but it is it is helpful though now that you know he's always on his phone too mm-hmm. when he's watching a movie right. because then he can pretend that he's on right. his phone. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing that I that I was always asking. I asked my daughter Rachel once. I said, "How can you really follow the plot of a show or a movie when you're spending half the time looking at your phone?" I can't I mean, stand it, that. There's yeah. nothing that's ever going to be like you're completely paying attention to because you're right. split. But you know, yet Luis can quote like 20 minutes from like the big Lebowski. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've never not seen him on his phone while he's watching it. Or maybe it's just cause he's watched it. You or, know, or maybe he's watching it on his phone while it's on the TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> or maybe the parts that, that become quotable break through that. Right. You know, the phone thing. So he sees those parts. Right. You can tell, you can tell when you're, reading or looking on the phone that something is happening that is better than the rest of it right you know? yeah it's it is weird though I don't, I don't understand why people want to do that it's like to me i mentioned that before about listening to podcasts at double speed and or, or reading right. a book at double speed why yeah. aren't you doing it to enjoy it you know? uh-huh. Yeah, not when I'm listening to a lecture I have to write about. I really love that I can double speed it. <laughs> you know, Rachel does that when she's listening to certain lectures at school. Yeah. She'll do one and a half speed. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Walk Hard yet, Bailey? No. Why not? I'm sorry. Have you got your list there? You keep Damn looking it. at <laughs> things, Walk to, hard. things to talk about. Did you hear hard. about Sam Elliott and Power of the Dog? Yeah. Oh, I watched that. Oh, you did, I watch, did it. watch that. What did you think? Was it ponderous? It looks kind of ponderous. It was very, it was very yeah. ponderous. Fucking ponderous. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I didn't hate it. I mean, because I know what well, you said, you didn't really like it, but my husband didn't really like it. But yeah, he watched the whole thing. He stayed awake. So I mean, I think that says something because usually he'll just doze off. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't that I hated it. I just wanted to like it more, and right, and it did feel. Ugh. You're sort of waiting for something more to happen. Right. Right. Yeah, and it just kind of keeps kind of ebbing along yeah, yeah it's like a short roller coaster yeah <laughs> yeah well i yeah. went to see the batman last night you know not oh yeah oh really and i liked it more than i thought i was going to i keep wondering why there's another one i don't even freaking know i honestly don't know yeah. but some parts of it i liked almost more than any other one i've seen like there's this one scene hmm. where he's on top of a building getting ready to like do his you know the batman jump and you can tell he's scared you know, he's like, mm-hmm. shit, or something like that, you know? And I kind of liked that. And and the whole thing with him and Catwoman, too, just seemed like, um, it, that was like the only one that seemed kind of real to me of all of them. Mm. So it was interesting. Mm. Um, you didn't think it was going to be good? Well, because I had read a couple of reviews in advance, because I heard it was three hours. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, i got to sit through right. three hours. Right. <laughs> and... Um, the reviews were mixed, you know, mm. but I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. And well, I and I went to see Drive My Car, that movie that I think I've mentioned twenty times. Mm-hmm. And that I didn't like that as much as I thought I was going to see. That was three hours too, wasn't it? That was three hours. Wow. So I watched on the plane, on the way out I watched In the Heights. Oh. 
the musical, and then on the way yeah. back, I watched Dune. How about that for <laughs> wow. two totally different movies? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dune was good, although Timothy, what's his name? I don't know how to pronounce his Sh- last name. Chalamet. Like, Chalamet. Like, he's so attractive I as know. a person, but I feel like he wasn't the right person for that role. Mm. I don't know. He just, like, when I think of... um What's the guy's name from David Lynch's Dune? Uh, Kyle MacLachlan. He mm-hmm. just seems more appropriate for that role. I don't know why. I know. I should go back and watch that one. The, it's, the first it is, one. it's kind of funny, really. I mean, it's yeah. got a lot of good David Lynch stuff, but they destroyed it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, <laughs> to that whole thing with the tooth. In, in the David Lynch one, it's just so goofy. Yeah. The tooth. Did Dune work on the little screen? Know. It was okay, actually. Yeah. I mean, I do like okay. that director's movies. I think he's just super good. Yeah. Like, I loved Arrival. Yeah, yeah I did, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really liked that. Did you see that, Wally? Arrival? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was excellent. It was surprising. You know, I didn't really expect what happened, right. and I loved those creatures, and I loved the fact of, yeah. you know, they didn't look like humans at all. They weren't bipeds, and, and right. like, look at how they communicated, and it was so, the, I thought the ideas were super interesting. Yeah, there were no cliches in that. Uh, yeah. Right, right. I don't have anything else, really. Oh, wait, I had a dream. Oh, no. <laughs> you know those round sleds? Yeah, the saucers. Yeah. Saucer sleds. In my dream, I was on one of those, uh, like two feet underwater, but somehow floating in the English Channel. When I put my head under the water, I could see like octopuses and fish. And in that 1930s style, they were all living down underneath the English Channel. You know how 30s cartoons, they would repeat the same yeah. pattern. Yeah. Over. They, were, they yeah. would do that. Yeah. And it was all kind of happy. Also, when I was that age, it was a big thing to have a periscope. Those cardboard ones? Cardboard, like the size of a yeah. milk carton, but yeah. taller. And you could look through them and look up. I had one in each hand. <laughs> when I held them up and looked through them on the cliffs, like the cliffs of Dover, way in the distance, like 10 miles away, there were these little figures on top of the cliff. In one periscope on the right hand, I could see Bailey. And in the one on the left hand, I could see Grace. No way. Oh, come on. No way. Honest to God. And you were both, you were separated by miles, too, from each other. But you were having a tea party. (laughs) (laughs) So we each had our own party going on? You each had your own little tea party, like a, you know, like a four-year-old would have. You could see that I was looking at you, and you you waved, and it was all very pleasant. And maybe that's where I got the idea there should be more conflict or something. But <laughs> now, were you wearing were you wearing a snowsuit since you were on a sled? No, I was just I don't know what I was wearing, but I was, but it was a floating sled. It would be a cool thing if they could make that, where right. you could sort of hover just below the surface. Yeah, right. I saw something like that actually. I saw a guy on this board that he, it was like, you know, those scooters that you control with your feet. Oh, right. a Segway? He was on the water in one of those. It, is the, it didn't have any handles. He oh, was okay. just like surfing on it. It was on, He was on the canal and it goes really fast. Wow. It was, I had never seen hmm. anything like it before. It was the coolest thing I ever saw. Well, not ever, but, you know, it was a very cool thing to see. <laughs> that uh... It sort of reminds me of that. Yeah. That was another dream I had, but it, was, it wasn't angry and it wasn't scary. It was just kind of weirdly... That sounds kind of nice, actually. <laughs> it's so interesting, though. Like, how do these things... The periscopes and the sled from the 1950s. Yeah. You know, and, and hmm. the... Like, Bailey and I were the only things from the modern day, right? I mean... <laughs> because you knew you were doing the chat this morning, so you probably... Uh... Thought about us. Well, no, this was a couple of weeks ago. This was, oh, you yeah. said last night, Well, I did? Wow. Yeah, can you get your timeline straight? Wow. I shouldn't have said last night. It wasn't last uh, night. It was... Wow. False narrative. Yeah. I should have written it. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever written down your dreams? I haven't. No. Because that's a weird feeling. I When I was doing more of my own writing, you know, like trying to do fiction, which I don't even know why I ever tried that because I just don't have the axe to grind. And uh, <laughs> well, you know, and I I don't mean that in a bad way. Right. It's just, it's not what I care about. So th- in this one workshop, they suggested keeping a dream journal. And I did that for a while. And it was weird when you go back and read them, you get this real creepy feeling. You do forget them. I guess yeah. typically you, f- mm-hmm. you forget within 10 minutes or something. Yeah. But 
So if you had kept a journal, that would be... Yeah, it was weird. It just, I, I sort of didn't like the feeling that you got, you know, it's... How was your handwriting? Well, it wasn't, it, I wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night or anything and do it. You know, I would, it typically was, I would remember, you know, how sometimes you wake up in the morning and you get, you have it for a few right. minutes. I would get it then. Have it fresh. Yeah, because right. I rarely wake up in the middle of the night from a dream unless I'm terrified and I scream out loud, which I told you about a couple of times. <laughs> I'm Bailey. I'm Grace. I'm Wally. Maybe we should start out. I'm Bailey. I'm Grace. I'm Wally. And, and you've been, been listening, listening to Tarball Chats. Chats. Okay. Go like that. And maybe we could all save at the same time. And you you've been listening, been listening to Tarball Chats. Chats. But does it sound like hard-boiled cats <laughs> when, we, <laughs> when we say it together? <laughs> hard-boiled cats. Wow, I like that. Hard-boiled cats.